Would you like to hear about the day our Savior, our Lord Jesus, was born? Then let's begin. Plus the night before. Now I know what you're thinking. That's not the right story, but I assure you it is. Just listen. It was the night before Sabbath, but in old Nazareth, like an ordinary Mary had a visitor she didn't expect. His name was Gabriel. He was a man sent from God, and when Mary saw him, she thought it was quite odd. What did Mary want with her? What did God want with her only a young girl? Let's hear Gabriel's message and watch God's plan for the I think Joseph will like this land to see what I made for him. He's coming to die with my family tonight, and I want him to know what a good wife I will make for him. And as my mother always says, the quickest way to a man's heart is through his stuff. Who are you? Where did you come from? Mary of Nazareth, it is I, an angel Gabriel, come to deliver God's message to you. What could God possibly want with me? You are favored by the Lord. The Lord is with you. But I am only a young girl. Don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will soon become pregnant and give birth to a son and name him Jesus. He will be a great man and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. Your son will be the king of Jacob's people forever and his kingdom will never end. But how can this be? The Holy Spirit will come to you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy Child developing inside you will be called the Son of God. This doesn't seem possible. Elizabeth, your relative, is six months pregnant with a son in her old age. People said she couldn't have a child. I think it's impossible for God. Very well. I am the Lord's servant. Let everything you said happen. Now Mary was ready to do the Lord's will, but there was one little problem that bothered her still. One of her husband, Joseph the carpenter, when she told him of the baby, would he even want her? Well, Joseph was angry. How could this be? This was so unexpected from a sweet girl, Mary. He would end their marriage. That's just what he'd do. But then Gabriel came and told Joseph God's plan too. I can't believe what Mary told me. How can she be pregnant and she wants me to trust that the baby is the son of God? Well, that's preposterous. She must think I'm a fool, and to think will just be truth. I cannot worry about this any more tonight. I'll go to sleep, and in the morning, I'll go to the high priest and tell them that I would like to quietly end my marriage to Mary. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. What Mary said was true. An angel did visit her to tell her of God's plan, and now the same angel has visited me. I will do as God wishes and take Mary as my wife tomorrow. And when the time comes and she gives birth to, to a son, I will raise him and help him to become a man God wants him to be. So the two were married and as happy as could be. They planned a home with her for a baby. Spring changed to summer and then became autumn. Mary and Joseph were anxious for the baby they'd been given. Mary's tummy was growing as as big as could be, and then Caesar Augustus issued a decree. There was to be a census taken all over the land. Now Mary and Joseph must go to Bethlehem. I'm not going to lie. I was not very happy about having to travel all the way to Nazareth to Bethlehem with Mary so close to giving birth. But what else could we do? Bethlehem is the town of David, and because I belong to the house and line of David, we had better go there and register. It was not a pleasant journey, let me tell you. It took us five days to travel 90 miles across the treacherous terrain on the back of the donkey. Speak for yourself. I had to walk the entire way. That may be true, but which one of us is pregnant with the son of God? You got me there. Exactly. <laughs> Mary and Joseph arrived after many days, and they looked and looked for somewhere they could stay. 
There were so many people from near and from far, they came to be counted on the register. So Mary and Joseph knocked on each and every door. The answer always the same as the one before. There's no room at the end, they keep his pride. Mary said, I just want to birth my baby inside. What did the keeper took pity on our travelers to? He said, I have an idea, I know what you can do. All right, so here's the thing. I'm having an absolute record-breaking weekend here in Bethlehem. All of my rooms are sold. Can you believe it? Anyway, we don't get too many travelers to Bethlehem, so us innkeepers are very excited for the influx of travelers headed our way. Only we had no idea just how many there would be. You've got to remember, we don't have phones, we don't have the internet. We had no idea how many people would be coming. We counted for the census. Come to think of it, that's probably why Caesar wanted to have a census in the first place. In any case, when Mary and Joseph showed up at my door, I was all flipped up. Can you believe it? But I'm a smart businessman, so I wasn't about to turn away a paying customer. No, sir. I may not I may not have had any more room inside my inn, but I knew I had just the place for that pregnant gal to give birth to her little bottle of joy. You know the place I'm talking about? That's right. The stable outback. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. How could you let the mother of our Lord, Jesus Christ, give birth to him in a smelly old stable? Well, I will have you know I keep a very clean stable, and I'm known throughout Bethlehem for having a nice sheep, horses, and cows on it. And of course, you have to remember that I didn't know that Mary was going to give birth to the Jesus Christ. To me, Mary and Joseph were just another couple of pain <coughs> So I took them out back, gave them some nice, clean hay and some wind. I had laying around and wished them a good night. And I guess the rest was, as they say, history. Can you believe it? So as night crept in on the stable so warm, Mary's firstborn child, a son, was born. In swaddling and swaddling clothes, she wrapped him tight to keep him warm in the cold, dark night. She laid him in a manger to use his bed, for the straw was his pillow that cradled his head. And what to do she call him, a name we know so well? Why, of course, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel. What a miracle to think that I'm holding the Son of God in my arms. But when I look at him, I just see my son. My son who I will love and protect and nurture, so that he can grow into the man that God needs to be. What an awesome responsibility God has given me. I'm not going to lie. It's a little scary. Am I going to be a good mom? Will I make the right decisions? Will he grow up to be everything he's supposed to be? But I know God will be by my side every step of the way. And I thank him for giving me this most special gift, the gift of my son. Nearby in the fields, a shepherd tended to the sheep. It was getting pretty late. He was falling asleep. And then out in the darkness, a great noise was heard. A chorus of angels asleep did the start. They brought him a message from heaven above, the birth of a Savior, joyous tidings of love. And the next sheep ran over the garden gate. Up, up, up he jumped and landed on the other side. That's 1,263 sheep. And then the next sheep ran over the garden gate, and up, up, up he jumped and landed on the other side. Good little sheepy, you shepherd is proud of you. That's 1,260. Glory to God in the highest heaven, the peace of those who are the dream Hey, that's not nice. You've gone messing up my sheep county. Mm -hmm. Ah, where are you? Where did you come from? Don't be afraid. I heard good news that will cause great joy for all the people. That's great, but you do realize it's not nice to sneak up on people like that, don't you? Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Wow, okay. Well, that's worth interrupting my sleep then. Go on. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothing and lying in a manger. But how will I know where to find him? God will guide you. Yes, he will. Now, what did you say her name was again? People are always coming and go these days. She didn't even give me her name. Well, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened. So the shepherd set off to see the Messiah. He trusted in God so they'd know where to find him. His journey was... I'm sorry. I know you was trying to tell a story here. And you've got this really cool, rhyming thing going. 
Thank you. You're welcome. But I just have to say this. It's not nice to wake someone up when they're sleeping, all right? I mean, you've all been there, right? It's better to wake up nice and slowly, stretch out a little, see what the day has in store for you. For when you're startled out of sleep, I mean, can you blame me for being a little confused? There I was, tending my flock, and out of nowhere, the angel of the Lord showed up and surprised. If I had to do it all over again, I think I would have been much more impressive, I assure you. But what can you do? The Lord works in mysterious ways, I suppose. But it was pretty cool. I had a personal invitation from God himself to meet his newborn son, am I right? You certainly are. That's what I thought. Sorry about that, guys. Now, where was I? Oh, yes, here I am. His church was long, but when he arrived, a most wondrous sight awaited his eyes. This Christ child of the manger did lay, surrounded by animals asleep in the hay. The shepherd knelt down and began to pray, to give thanks to God for this miraculous day. Now in the east, my son proclaimed the good news, so three wise men set out to find the king of the Jews. What a bright star! I have never seen such a sight. No one but God Himself could put such a star in the sky. <laughs> Harry will be pleased when, when we reach our destination and send word of the Christ child. Are we there yet? Of course we're not there yet. We've just began our journey. Do you realize how far away Bethlehem is? Whatever do you mean, no boy? Check out this map. You see the spot right here? Yes. Well, that's where we are right now. Okay? You see the spot way over here? Yes, that's where we're going. So, so our feet are going to be very sore when we get there. We have camels, no course. Well, well, then the camels' feet are going to be very sore. I'm afraid I don't see the problem, no course. This is one true king we are talking about. I will travel any distance to see him and to honor him. I agree. No matter how far or long it takes us to get here, I will offer my gifts and praises to the new king. I guess you're right. Does everyone have the special offerings they brought from their land? Yes, I have gold. I have frankincense, and I have myrrh. Very good. Well, I guess we better be on our way, otherwise this kid is going to be five years old before we lay our eyes on him. Will he ever stop complaining? God willing. Are we there yet? Many months later, the wise have arrived. Their journey was long, but their spirits revived. At the sight of this mother and her sweet young boy, they finally felt peace, understanding, and joy. They gave him their gifts and fell down at, then fell down their praise, then returned to their home, traveling a different way. Close the night before Christmas, the birth of our Lord, the most wondrous story that's ever been told. When a group of God's chosen came from all over the land to praise the little Christ child in little Bethlehem. Now this is our end, or is it the beginning, of a story that teaches our reason for living. On this special day, all the nature here, take a moment to remember why we've all gathered here. It's not about presents, it's not about trees, it's not about ribbons, it's not about wreaths. It's about, it's about the most precious gift that God gave us that night, and the gift of his son to make the world right. So thanks for listening to all I have to say about what happened that What happened that night, which is now Christmas Day. Now, one last thing before I turn out the lights. Merry Christmas to all.